There is lots of information and many different opinions about how many meals per day we should eat. Some claim that you need to eat at least six meals per day to maximize muscle growth. Others claim that intermittent fasting is best for fat loss. So when aiming to improve our body composition, how many meals per day should we really eat? Before we get into the details about meal frequency, we first need to understand a few key principles of nutrition. These principles will lay the foundational understanding of nutrition, which will help us understand the impact of meal frequency for the rest of this video. The first and most important concept to understand is energy balance. Energy balance simply refers to the calories we consume versus the calories we expend. Energy balance will ultimately determine weight change over time. If we eat more calories than we expend, we will gain weight. If we eat equal calories to what we expend, we will maintain weight. And if we eat fewer calories than we expend, we will lose weight. The second principle to understand is the role of macronutrients. Macronutrients can be thought of as what makes up calories. There are three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. All foods contain a certain amount of calories, which are made up of some combination of these three macros. While macronutrients don't have an impact on overall body weight change, they can have an influence on body composition. In other words, what proportion of muscle versus fat we lose or gain over time. Without going into too much detail, we generally want to try and consume a high daily protein intake, a lower fat intake, and a moderate to high carbohydrate intake within our total daily calorie allowance. This usually results in the most favorable body composition outcomes. So now that we have covered the basic nutritional principles, we can now start to explore the question of how many meals per day we should eat. To answer this, however, we need to understand that there are two different goals related to body composition. Generally, we want to both build more muscle mass and also reduce body fat. While most of us want to achieve both of these outcomes, they are in fact two different things. Muscle growth is a structural adaptation achieved through resistance training, while fat loss is a decrease in stored tissue occurring as a result of a consistent calorie deficit. This means that the optimal number of meals we consume per day may be different for each adaptation. So in this video, we will discuss the impact of meal frequency on both muscle growth and on fat loss. With that covered, we can now explore how many meals per day is ideal for body composition outcomes. The first step is to define exactly what this means. Essentially, this is a question of meal frequency. Meal frequency refers to how many meals per day we consume, assuming total daily calories and macronutrients are equated. This means that if we eat more meals per day, each meal will have fewer calories and fewer of our total daily macronutrients. And if we eat fewer meals per day, each meal will be larger and have more of our total daily macros. So whenever discussing this topic, we need to assume that overall calories and macros are equated. So with this out of the way, let's now discuss how meal frequency influences muscle growth and fat loss. First, let's discuss how meal frequency influences muscle growth. Meal frequency may have an influence on muscle growth via its effects on protein frequency. It is often claimed that lifters should consume at least four to six high protein feedings per day to maximize muscle growth. However, much of this theory is based on mechanisms rather than actual direct evidence. The general theory is that consuming more frequent protein feedings throughout the day will result in a more anabolic environment throughout the course of the day. And if fewer protein feedings are consumed, this will cause us to be in a catabolic state for a larger proportion of the day. I have even heard anecdotes of lifters taking this concept so far in that they would wake up during their sleep just to consume a protein feeding to ensure muscle protein synthesis is maximized. However, the reality is that muscle protein synthesis doesn't always correlate directly with actual muscle growth. In the limited research we have which directly assesses body composition changes, it is generally found that protein frequency doesn't seem to have any significant influence on muscle growth. For example, this study explored the effects of protein frequency on muscle growth in rugby players performing resistance training. The athletes consumed the same amount of total daily protein consumed across three or six feedings per day. 
it was found that the high protein diets in combination with resistance training resulted in muscle growth for both groups after six weeks, and there were no significant differences in muscle growth between the groups. This is one example showing us that total daily protein intake is the primary factor to be concerned with, while the exact distribution of this protein is probably less important, if important at all. And the other way that meal frequency may influence muscle growth is via its effects on calorie intake. We previously mentioned that when discussing meal frequency, we are assuming calorie balance is equated. However, meal frequency can actually influence our calorie balance too. Simply put, eating more meals per day provides more opportunities to consume calories. So unless you are strictly tracking your calories and have all your meals planned out, a higher meal frequency will naturally cause us to eat more total calories in most cases. And even if you are tracking your food, it will likely increase the temptation to eat more, increasing the chances of overeating on your planned diet. On the other hand, eating fewer meals per day will likely decrease the risk of overeating, which is something we will discuss shortly in the next section on fat loss. So although a higher meal frequency is probably a negative outcome in most cases, it can have a positive effect in specific situations. For the small percentage of people who struggle to consume enough calories to be in an intentional surplus, this is a strategy that can help you. If you were trying to eat in a calorie surplus to maximize muscle growth, but you can't eat enough to be in a surplus, consuming more meals per day will probably increase total daily calorie intake. However, for most people, eating in a surplus is not an issue at all, so this probably isn't advised in most cases. So while there didn't seem to be any significant effect of meal frequency for muscle growth, it may have a bigger influence on fat loss. Let's now cover how meal frequency influences fat loss. Like we mentioned previously, our meal frequency can influence how many calories we consume. It is generally found that eating fewer meals per day tends to result in a lower daily calorie intake. This was observed in this large-scale study which looked at the eating behaviours and weight change over a multi-year time course in over 50,000 regular people. It was found that those who ate fewer meals per day tended to see reductions in body weight over time, while those who ate more meals and snacks per day tended to see an increase in body weight over time. So it seems that meal frequency can indirectly influence fat loss via its impact on calorie intake. Those who are aiming to eat in a calorie deficit to reduce body fat may find it more manageable by reducing the number of meals eaten per day. This will likely result in a slightly lower overall calorie intake, assisting the fat loss process. The other way in which meal frequency may influence fat loss is through its effects on our food focus. This refers to the time throughout the day that we are consciously thinking about food. This is those occasions when we are contemplating on what we are going to eat for our next meal, how we can fit a specific food into our overall calorie allowance, overly glorifying our food, stressing over food decisions, etc. Obviously, we need to be somewhat aware of what we are eating and plan this out in advance to some extent. However, excessive food focus can be mentally very taxing and can ultimately cause us to overeat or even worse, give up on our diet altogether. Meal frequency is a major factor which can influence our food focus. A higher meal frequency means we must plan out and think about food more times throughout the day, increasing our food focus. On the other hand, a lower meal frequency means we don't have to plan as many different meals and we don't have to think about our next meal for multiple hours, decreasing our food focus. A lower food focus is generally a good thing for fat loss because it means we can focus on other things in our life, such as work, family, and lifting, rather than always having food on our mind. This usually decreases mental fatigue and decreases our chances of overeating. And the last factor I wanted to bring up in this discussion is the influence of meal frequency on energy expenditure. It is sometimes claimed that eating more meals per day boosts our metabolic rate and increases our total daily energy expenditure compared with eating the same calories in fewer meals. This would be beneficial for fat loss since we would expend more energy, putting us at a lower energy balance. However, research has shown that this is mostly a myth. Our meal frequency doesn't seem to have an impact 
on total daily energy expenditure. For example, this study explored the effects of eating the same calorie intake across three regular meals versus 14 snacking meals per day. It was found that there were no noticeable differences in total daily energy expenditure between each group. While we are looking at this study, it is also interesting to look at the hunger and satiety ratings between groups. As we can see, eating three times per day resulted in much lower overall hunger levels and much greater satiety over a 24 hour period. On the other hand, the high frequency snacking group seemed to be hungry throughout the entire day and less satiated after eating. So as we can see from this study, a higher meal frequency doesn't seem to boost our metabolic rate and help us burn more calories. Furthermore, as a bonus, a lower meal frequency helps us feel more satiated and less hungry throughout the day, reducing our likelihood of overeating. This may be one mechanism explaining why a lower meal frequency helps us to reduce calorie intake. So now we have covered the theory behind meal frequency and its effects on body composition. However, there are also some practical considerations that meal frequency impacts too. The first is that meal frequency influences our cooking and preparation of food. A higher meal frequency usually means we have to cook or prepare more meals and pack them if we are not at home. This is simply inconvenient for most people because it takes more time and effort to cook, prepare and pack food. Furthermore, this also takes more mental energy and thought to decide what you are going to eat for each meal throughout the day. On the other hand, a lower meal frequency requires larger portions of fewer foods. So the cooking, preparation and packing is a far lesser burden compared with a higher meal frequency. With this approach, you can cook large batches of food and have your meals prepared for the next few days with far less overall time and mental energy. And the other practical consideration is the time we allocate to eating our meals. This is somewhat dependent on our regular daily routine and when we naturally have meal breaks throughout the day. However, a high meal frequency naturally means we must stop what we are doing more times throughout the day to shift our focus to eating. This means we spend more time eating and less time on other potentially important tasks in our life, such as working, caring for family, training, or engaging in other hobbies. Furthermore, this also reinforces the food-focused behaviors that we discussed earlier in this video. The more times we have to stop and think about food, the more likely we are to be mentally stressed about our food selection and potentially overeat if we are trying to adhere to a calorie deficit. On the other hand, a lower meal frequency means we don't have to stop what we are doing as often. This means we can focus on other important duties throughout the day and eat a large quantity of food at a few designated times. This will take our mind off food for multiple hours until our next large meal, which will probably be at a time when it may actually be beneficial to stop what you were doing and take a break to eat. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. From a pure physiological standpoint, meal frequency doesn't seem to have any significant impact on either muscle growth or fat loss when considering fairly normal meal frequencies. Rather, it is total daily calorie balance and macronutrients which are the most important for weight change and body composition. However, there are certainly many behavioral effects that meal frequency can impact. The number of meals we eat per day can influence our calorie intake and our mental food focus. Furthermore, meal frequency has an impact on practicality. The number of meals we eat per day will impact how much time we spend cooking, preparing and packing food, and the time spent stopping our day to eat each meal. So as a general guideline, I would recommend eating somewhere between two to four meals per day for most people. Those who are intentionally trying to reduce calorie intake would probably benefit from eating on the lower end of this range, while those who are struggling to adhere to a calorie surplus are better off eating on the higher end of this range, and even eating up to 5 or 6 meals per day if they need to. However, those struggling to get enough calories in is the minority of people. Most of us struggle to reduce calorie intake, so a lower meal frequency is recommended for the majority of people. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.